Research Foundation. And we'll talk today about the concepts behind network theory broadly, but uh, we'll quickly move to a discussion of how to apply network analysis to better understand social media. And that will include Facebook and YouTube and Flickr. Uh, but in particular, we're going to look at Twitter. Uh, at least for this one hour session, we'll, we'll focus on that. I will note that the tool does work for a variety of data uh, sources, including Facebook and YouTube and so on. But we'll be using mostly Twitter uh, examples. Uh, to that end, if anybody would like in the chat to enter the hashtag or topic that would be of interest to see the map of, um, I'll look for those suggestions in the chat. And uh, in the course of our discussion today, I think we can actually manufacture a couple of these maps on the fly. They only take a few minutes to make. Uh, so if you do have some suggestions, uh, some of the, uh, the easy suggestions have already been taken. I've done SQL, SQL Server, SQL uh, Pass, and that kind of uh, topic. But if you have others, uh, and, and we'll be looking at some of those in the course of uh, this hour. So uh, I'm going to pause for a moment, see if uh, Jen would like to uh, say a few words at the beginning of the discussion. Jen, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. You can. Excellent. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say a big thank you for joining us this evening. I'm looking forward to your session. And so, yes, I am. <laughs> it should be very interesting and it's something uh, that I hope uh, everybody can relate to. So if when we go along, if you would like to, um, if anybody if you would like us to start tweeting in a particular hashtag, if you let us know, that would be good. I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. Well, why don't you use uh, the SQL Pass hashtag? Okay. And if you want to include the word Node Excel, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and what uh, I will do in the course of our discussion is make an updated map of that topic, uh, and you'll see how we go about that whole process. That sounds good. So, uh, just before we proceed, your Twitter handle we should use at. Node Excel, so should we include that as well? Sure, or the hashtag uh, Node Excel, or just Node Excel. There aren't too many others, so the at or the number sign is probably optional. All right, yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. I'll hand back over to you. I'm excited by this. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Jen, thanks for having me here. And folks, uh, if you you've got uh, topics that you would like to map in addition to SQL Pass, let me know in the chat. And I'm going to assume that if you've come to the call, it's because you have an interest in uh, not only networks, but in social media. And we're going to spend the hour talking about the overlap of those two things. So um, first thing, I'm going to jump out of the slide deck, in fact, and I'm going to take you to a couple of um, websites. And let me start with this one. There we go. Uh, you can get to this uh, at the URL nodexlgraphgallery.org. And in fact, I'm going to paste this URL into the chat uh, right there. And uh, I believe the whole audience can get to the chat and let me know if you have any problems getting to that link. Uh, graph gallery, uh, the, the normal front end of it looks like this. Uh, it contains the contributions of many of our users. And uh, we have, uh, I, I suspect, uh, several thousand, maybe several tens of thousands of users out there who are using Node Excel. And they are collecting network data and they are sharing that network data through this website the Node Excel Graph Gallery. Um, this could be thought of as the Flickr for networks. And so in Graph Gallery, we can see a variety of network patterns and data sets. And these data sets can actually be downloaded through the service. So uh, one of the data sets that may be of particular interest to this group uh, might be, and where did it go? for SQL 
will pass. There it is. So I'm going to click on this, and we get a, a zoomed in, slightly larger view of the graph. This is a graph that was uh, constructed and created from data extracted from Twitter. And in the caption down below, we can see a lot of the descriptive text that gives us the context that tells us where did the data come from. This is 384 Twitter users. They all said the word SQL pass. They did that in the six day, 22 hour, two minute period, loosely, uh, from last Wednesday to today. So I made this earlier today. And there, there were, you know, roughly, uh, you know, uh, about 677 of these tweets. And when people tweeted, not only did they just tweet, uh, frequently they replied or they mentioned someone else. And when they did, we interpret that as a line that links them to that person. And some of the lines are thick, and that means that there are many mentions or replies. And some are quite thin and light, and that would mean that there's only one mention or a reply. And, and you can see that some people have uh, no mentions or replies. These people in group six uh, all tweeted, but they did not reply or mention anyone else. We would call them isolates. And yet in other groups, several people would reply to each other but in different patterns. So here in G2, the SQL Pass account itself is essentially a hub in a hub and spoke structure. Whereas in some of the other groups, there's more of a community. So this is an account that does a more broadcast-like behavior. Whereas these accounts not only reply to a hub, they reply to each other. And so this is a uh, Let's see, I'm getting something that tells me that uh, the sound may not be good. If the sound is not good, please uh, say something into the chat, but uh, I'm going to continue otherwise. Okay, so um, what we've done is made it easy to get social media network data and analyze that data, particularly if you are not a programmer. Now, I. I understand that there's a really good chance that many of you are software developers in one language or another, and I appreciate that. And, it, and if you are a developer, we are a free and open C Sharp library. And uh, I should point you here as well. Uh, this is our distribution point on the CodePlex site at uh, nodexl.codeplex.com. So there is the link in the chat. You can download us here. We're currently at version 245, so we're agile, uh, and we keep releasing about once a month or so, uh, a new drop comes out. So you can get the, the tool here, and you'll see uh, news about the various features and updates available. Uh, we also have several available plugins, as it says here, several available plugins. Uh, and these plugins are uh, extensions that allow you to go beyond the standard set of importers. So we now offer a web crawler, uh, an importer for Exchange email servers, a Facebook importer, and a MediaWiki importer. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, the organization that brings this to you is the uh, Social Media Research Foundation, and uh, you can find us here at smrfoundation.org. I'll paste that in here as well. And uh, just for the heck of it, I'll, I'll point out that I blog at connectedaction.net, and you, you can find a lot of news about NodeXL here. So um, what I'd like to do is uh, show you a couple of pictures about networks and network theory, but I think uh, a good idea might be to very quickly just get a graph and analyze it, show you around the interface. Uh, this is Node Excel. It's an add-in to Excel. You get your own ribbon here. And it has all of the buttons and levers and dials necessary to get a graph, analyze a graph, visualize a graph, and publish a graph. Uh, so to get a Twitter network data set, we would just go into Node Excel data import from Twitter search network. Uh, we've updated this recently to talk to the Twitter 
API 1.1, and I could get a graph, uh, let's say, of all mentions of uh, Node XL. Now I'm going to ask for 10,000 tweets, and I'm not going to get that many uh, for very for various reasons. Uh, for one thing, I don't think there are 10,000 tweets about Node XL. Maybe after this call, but not, not so far. And uh, the other is that Twitter is not the most generous data provider. Uh, there are all sorts of rules and regulations related to all of the various data providers. Um, and Twitter has its own set of rules. And we comply with those rules. You, you can't not, but you know, we, we don't try to not comply with those rules. So I'm going to go and get uh, a bunch of tweets. And then uh, Node Excel is going to go in and talk to Twitter and grab a bunch of data about all the people, find out who mentioned who. And it then is going to start, and this is a, a part that I particularly like, an automated process. Um, it can be used manually. You can do everything that it is doing, which is to say it clustered the graph, it's calculating some metrics about the graph, uh, it's then going to build these little thumbnail images, it's going to draw the graph, it, it, it has a lot of homework to do. And it's certainly the case that you could perform these operations one after another. Uh, and in fact, maybe in the course of this call, we will do uh, essentially that just to show off the variety of functions that it can perform. But what it's doing right now is very important to me in that Node XL was designed to make it easy to get a graph, analyze the graph, visualize the graph, and share it with others. So easy, in fact, that no humans are necessary. And then we have uh, completed the graph. Hang on a second. I'm going to go and pull it onto. It, I have a two-screen system, and you can't see the other screen, so I'm going to uh, resize my graph here and then uh, pull it onto the screen for you. Hang on a second. There we are. So there's my graph. Uh, this is the set of connections among the people who said uh, a word that matters to me, the name of my project. Uh, so this is the Node XL mentioning graph. And uh, very soon, uh, this cluster, I suspect, is going to get bigger. This is the group of people who talk about Node Excel in the context of SQL Pass. These words at the top of these boxes, those are the hashtags that have been mined out of the tweets that occur most frequently in that cluster. And I'll show off some of those features. So um, first of all, we can sort the data because this is Excel. After all, everything you know about Excel Hopefully you still know, and it still applies. Uh, anything you can do in Excel, you can do in Node Excel. Node Excel is just more Excel. And so what I've just done is sorted by this attribute, betweenness centrality. Betweenness centrality is one of a family of network metrics that can be calculated on a graph. And this metric is a a special one is a reasonable search for some people as influence. Notion people have in a social that are if not there. Not just rare, but well connected connections actually. So here you can see that some people are, in fact, in very unique positions. They, well, there's me. Uh, I, I talk about Node Excel a lot. I reply and mention a lot of other people. So uh, you have discovered who is the influencer for Node Excel. That was me. Maybe that's not the, the, the hardest problem to solve. Uh, um, but we also apply that to other topic spaces, other domains. We can look at a lot of domains. We could look at, for example, uh, topics like SQL Pass. But also, here's Big Data, or SharePoint, or just SQL Server. Uh, and we can do this for all sorts of topics. Uh, I'm going to filter this down just a little bit. 
And uh, I'll point to things like uh, the current issues in the United States. The, in the state of Texas, is, the state house has engaged in a dramatic legislative battle. People are talking about it. This is the map of them talking about it. Uh, people are very busy in Egypt. Uh, there's a certain amount of uh, political discord there. This is people talking about Egypt. Uh, people are talking about universities. This is Brigham Young University's hashtag being discussed. And as you look at the, these shapes, I hope you're starting to think, well, wait a second, they're not all the same. Some of these shapes are like others. Some of these shapes are very, very different. And in fact, what we've done is made enough of these that we've started to see some patterns. And those patterns tell us something about the nature of the conversation without even having to understand what the words are, without having to understand the language. Uh, so for example, we can look at something like end polio. And we can see that end polio is a topic that is dominated by these hub and spoke patterns. These three outlets, the end polio account, the Rotary International Account and the Gates Foundation uh, play a outsized role, but not a particular kind of role. They're not just popular, they're hubs in a spoke pattern. That's different from people in this cluster who are essentially engaged in what we could call community. They're more densely interconnected with each other. So these maps, I hope, begin to tell a story about social media, they quickly point to, for example, let's see, let's go back to the front page here, uh, who is uh, a leading voice in the SQL Pass community? I'm going to suspect that you know intuitively because you are members of and participants in, but I'm something of an outsider. I'm, I'm a visitor among you. Uh, so it can be useful for me to know that SQL Pass, and well, there it is, uh, that's our host. Hello, Jen. Uh, you're listed as the number two most influential voice in the hashtag SQL Pass. Uh, but here are several others, the top ten. Uh, I wonder if any of you are on this list. Does anybody see their own name? Let me know in the chat if you do. Uh, and for an outsider, it can be very useful to get a sense of the shape and who the leading voices are in that pattern of conversation. And what we try to do is make it relatively easy for people to get this report. And if you're unfamiliar with the, the visual representation, then we want to give you this textual representation that tells you what we think are the important things to know about that network. Uh, often I am, I, I show somebody a network and they say, but I don't understand that thing and what's important about it, why can't you just tell me? And so um, in the caption we attempt to just tell you. Um, we're going to tell you things like where did the data come from and when. But we're also going to give you the summary statistics. How many things? There's 384 people. Uh, how many tweets? 677. Uh, how dense is it? How many connections are there out of the number that could have been there? And it's not very dense, but Twitter's not very dense anyway, so it's pretty dense as these things go. So these measures can eventually tell you a lot if you take the time to learn about the various numbers. It, but essentially, it's a lot like geography, where three numbers are particularly important. Uh, latitude and longitude and elevation. If you give me those three numbers, I'll tell you exactly where you are on the planet. Uh, here we have a bunch more numbers, but they are useful for essentially that kind of a thing, figuring out where in the graph you are. Uh, but of course, these graphs are made out of tweets, and tweets have text, and the text can be analyzed in a way that is a um, sort of a pivot first on the social graph and then on the content. So here we report what are the URLs that are being mentioned in the context of SQL Pass right now. And these are the 10 most frequent in the last six days by, by frequency of mention. But 
they're not the same in every group. If we come back up here, you notice that here we have group one and group two and group three. These groups were created by an algorithm. They were built by a clustering algorithm built into Node Excel. In this case, it was an algorithm called Closet, uh, Closé Newman Moore, uh, those who speak French, uh, including Mr. Uh, Closé. Uh, it, it chops up the graph. It just puts things into bytes. And it does that trying to find things that are structurally self-contained uh, as much as it can. And so we could argue about the math, but we have three different algorithms that implement this chop up the graph thing. Uh, but we've selected one, and it has chopped up the graph. And in each of them, there are the tweets from the people who are in that cluster. And what we have done is summarize the content not only at the graph level, the whole graph, but in each of these subgroups. And that can be useful when you discover that this is a group that's talking about this aspect versus that aspect. Or when you find out that there are subgroups that uh, are actually talking about the same topic, but they do so in different languages. And therefore, they don't speak to the people in the other language communities. Or you may find out, as we'll see in some of these, that the topic is controversial and the two groups are separate because they don't like each other and they won't talk to each other even though they're talking about the same thing, but it's a controversial thing. So if you uh, are following along, and I can put this link in the chat for you as well, uh, here you scroll down and you'll see we're going to tell you about the URLs in each group, the 10 most frequently mentioned URLs in each group, and the number one may not be the same in every group. We're also going to tell you about the domains in those URLs because the higher level roll up of the domain site could be useful. We then tell you about the hashtags in the entire graph. So these are the top 10 hashtags. But the top 10 hashtags are not always the same in each of the subgroups. So for example, group three may be the Cambridge, and I'm assuming that's Boston Cambridge kind of Boston, or kind of Cambridge, maybe not, maybe it's the English Cambridge. Uh, but each of these groups seems to have formed around perhaps a geographic or a specific meetup. Uh, and so we can begin to understand, like G5 looks like it's the, uh, let's see, all the way up here, G5, this looks like it's the Tulsa people. So maybe some of you are from Oklahoma. Um, down below, below the hashtags, we then report words. So hashtags are sort of special words. They've got number signs in them, but words are just any space delimited token in the string. Uh, we also do word pairs, which can be very interesting. Get a little bit more insight when you see which words come together. Uh, we ought to do SQL Palooza. That could be an interesting map to make. So uh, I hope that you'll take some time to look at the whole caption, but there's something at the very, very bottom of the page that I really want you to uh, focus your attention on. Uh, first is the link that says download the graph data as a Node Excel workbook. That means if you found this display interesting and you'd like to explore it yourself, then just go to the bottom of the page, click this link, and you will download that data set. It'll show up as a workbook, a Node Excel or Excel workbook. And if you have Node Excel installed, you can open it, you can look at the exact same data. This link is pretty much the same idea, except that uh, we give it to you in XML. We give it to you in something called GraphML, rather than uh, making you unwrap it from an, uh, uh, an Office file format. Some people don't like the Office file formats. Uh, but the third one is really the magic. Uh, th this is a very important link, and it's an important file. Uh, essentially, this is the recipe that cooks the data. Uh, if we take the data in its unmodified form, unprocessed form, it's just a bunch of dots and lines. But if you look here, you'll see we've applied a number of processes. We've got color and size and shape and images and labels and there are a lot of decisions here. And so uh, I'm going to show you how we could apply this recipe idea 
let's see. So um, I'm going to open up a new Node Excel workbook, a blank one, and I'm going to point at um, Twitter, and I'm going to run a query for a SQL Palooza. I'm sorry, I missed that. And uh, while that's running, it won't take too long, I suspect, uh, I'm going to pause and see if there are any questions. Any questions out there? No? Okay. Uh, if you do, or if you have questions after the talk, let me give you my email address. And you're welcome to send me any questions you've got. So uh, it's now building the SQL Palooza graph. And you'll notice that it, it did this whole player piano thing. It started building the graph. It did all of those things. That's because of this button. This is the automate button. And I, I think it's the most powerful button we've got because when you hit this button uh, and you hit run, it's just going to do all the things that we've told it are good things to do to a graph. It's going to do them in this order. And you could, and maybe in the course of this call and with some of the other materials we have available, you'll learn what all of these things mean and how to set them. But what if you don't want to learn what they all mean and how to set them? Well, we have this options menu. And you can import options. And here, I've got a recipe called Mark's Desktop PC Node Excel Twitter Settings. It's essentially my Twitter recipe. And when you do that, all of these settings are set for you. And so as a result, I can, with relatively little training, uh, you don't have to really know all of the nooks and crannies of Node Excel, uh, and it'll make you one of these things pretty quickly. Um, the idea is that we can then use uh, expertise and socialize that expertise, that we, we can find people who have uh, the most experience with a tool like Node Excel who can then share that experience with others. So um, you can, I'll go find that page again, uh, find the recipe. It's right here. It's at the bottom of most of the uploads. Not every upload has data associated with it. That's an option. Um, and so uh, you can grab this recipe file out of any workbook. So I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to upload this graph. And that way you can see the SQL Palooza graph yourself and also how the export process goes. Uh, so here I've just gone into the Node Excel data export to graph gallery, uh, to the Node Excel graph gallery. And I'm going to note that we'll put the graph summary in there for you. So that whole report, when did we get the graph, how many people, you know, how many connections are there, all of that, uh, we'll just build that for you uh, because we believe that data ought to have a really good caption and that people are typically somewhat lazy. And so we'll do it for you. Uh, so I'm going to give it a title and I will then upload this. And in a few seconds, I hope you'll find that if you go to Graph Gallery, you'll see that this graph has been added to Graph Gallery. OK, so we'll go back to Graph Gallery. And you should now see SQL Palooza has appeared as the most recent graph. There is the graph. And it tells us that SQL Pass PVC and Carlos Bossi and Wendy Dance are the leading voices on the topic of SQL Palooza. So uh, let me go find my slides for a moment. And uh, I'll note that uh, this may be a good place for us to dig back in. Uh, Twitter is one source of network data. There are many. and as database people, uh, this may be the easiest way to express it. Uh, a network is born whenever two grids are joined. 
Uh, whenever you can take an entity and say that it has a relationship with another entity, essentially you have created a network. And so it might be interesting to think about all of the databases you have and think about the kinds of graphs that exist within them. And uh, think about how easy it is then to import that data into a spreadsheet, press a few buttons in Node Excel and see a picture. Uh, and not just see a picture, but also have some fairly sophisticated network metrics calculated on your behalf and then a report generated. So you might have a customer to product network. And of course, many of us have had an experience of this when we go shopping at Amazon and it says people who, who bought um, fuzzy slippers also bought coffee mugs. That's essentially traversing a graph. So uh, a network is born whenever two grids are joined. And in Node Excel, that is represented as this thing that we call the edges worksheet. And in network theory, we tend to call these things edges. The edges are connections between entities. The entities get called vertices. Why do we call them vertices? Because the mathematicians call them vertices. Why did they call them vertices? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you could call them nodes. We, we, of course, call the project node Excel. So node is a perfectly legitimate synonym for the word vertex. Entity, person, user, thing. That's what a vertex is, but an edge, an edge is a relationship, a tie, a connection, a link. And so we represent edges in a very simple form uh, known as an edge list in which we basically say, here's unique identifier one, here's unique identifier two. Uh, NK Fotakis has mentioned the Atlantic. Uh, it's because he has a retweet of the Atlantic. It happened on a date, it happened on a time, it had a hashtag, it had URLs, and it has a tweet text. And we give you that. So uh, when you have that, uh, you have a network, and that means that you can apply network theory. And network theory uh, goes back several hundred years to Euler's uh, development of this thing called the Bridges of Konigsberg problem. He developed topology as a result. Uh, fast forward to about 1930, uh, here it is, New York Times, 1933, and this is one of the first public discussions of the idea of social network analysis. This guy, uh, J. L. Moreno, Jacob Moreno, uh, a Romanian uh, immigrant to the United States, a professor at New York University in 1932-33, starts writing papers. Uh, he calls it psychological geography. Uh, the name does not stick. Uh, eventually it's called sociometrics. Name does not stick. <laughs> uh, in the 1960s and 70s it gets changed to social network analysis. And, uh, and here we are. That one's stuck. Uh, th this is one of the first ever social network analysis diagrams. And this represents the relationship chips of uh, players on a U.S. football team. So it's not the good kind of football, it's the other kind. Um, and these are the first very, you know, rough, hand-drawn, low-scale, very laborious kinds of graphs. Uh, th these were built out of uh, industrial work relationships. Uh, people looked at different teams and asked why are some better producers on a factory manufacturing line. And uh, network theory argued that it was the relationships among the employees rather than the qualities of any individual that really mattered. So network theory for a long time, a very manual, small scale, low end uh, process done with paper and pencils. Um, but network theory has grown up and uh, it has a lot to do with the idea of real estate uh, you may recall the three most important things in real estate being location, location, location. In network theory, it's essentially position, position, position. Uh, that it's the relative connections and position you have to others that really tells us about what's important rather than any particular attribute of you. So uh, sociologists tend to believe that it's really not know-how. 
it's know who. Uh, it's not so much your innate qualities as it is your relationships that really determine outcomes. Um, that, you know, the, the world needs people who know how to do things, but it's important to know those people. So uh, connectors and mavens in the language of Malcolm Gladwell, whose book, uh, uh, let, let's see, what was that one? That was uh, uh, a tipping point that talked a lot about the importance of uh, certain key people who connect others. So uh, the organization I'm working with, the Social Media Research Foundation, is a, uh, a tax-exempt 501c3 uh, nonprofit, and we're dedicated to open tools, open data, and open scholarship. Uh, so think of us as the not quite a successful version of Mozilla. Uh, we want we're uh, where they were very uh, focused on delivering an experience in Firefox that uh, was important to have available as an open tool. Uh, I like Firefox. Uh, we believe that network graphs are important too and that it's really important for there to be a network graph tool that's open. And so we have endeavored to make Node Excel available to uh, the world. Uh, so there are many other tools out there. Node Excel is only one of them. Uh, a shout out for the Gephi guys at gephi.org. That's G-E-P-H-I, Gephi. Uh, perhaps one of the most sophisticated and beautiful of the tools available. Uh, but uh, I will say this about Gephi. Uh, it, it is a very high-end tool, which, which is to say that their motto is that they are the Photoshop of networks. And we also have a motto. And we are the MS Paint of graphs. Uh, our goal is to be simple and easy to use. And you have seen some of that in operation with our notions of automation and recipes. But our goal is to be simple and easy to use, which isn't to say that we didn't actually go out and write a book. So there is a book. Uh, there, I don't think that there is a, uh, you know, is there a paint, the missing manual? I don't know if anybody actually wrote that book. But this is essentially Node Excel, the missing manual. Uh, and those are my very talented co-authors, uh, Derek Hansen, who's actually now at BYU at Brigham Young University in Utah, and there in the middle, uh, Ben Schneiderman, professor of computer science at the University of Maryland, and, and that's me and Bob. So uh, you can also find this breakout bestseller, uh, Communities in Cyberspace, uh, written with my now sadly departed uh, co-author, Peter Kollek. Uh, about 10 years old, talks about the sociology of online communities. So uh, this is what we've made Node Excel do for you. This is what we've made easy to do. And so if this is what you want to do, we do it really well. Uh, if you wanted to do something else, there's probably better tools out there. Uh, but we see a particular kind of workflow being part of a user experience in which a user says, there is a network. It exists somewhere. I need that data. Uh, you may share the, the sense uh, that the word network society is used quite a bit, that people talk about this being a network society. And yet, it turns out that these five things are relatively difficult to do. Networks, networks everywhere and not a drop to drink. Uh, wh where do I get my graph? What do I put it in? Um, I'm not a PhD in math. What do I do with it? Uh, and, you know, I need a picture. <laughs> and I'd like to share it with another person. And so this is exactly the workflow that we are trying to facilitate. Now, admittedly, these data providers may not actually include the data source you need. Um, I will note this, though, that Excel itself is a SQL client, and that sitting inside of a Node Excel session in Excel, you can import from any SQL server on Earth that you have access to. Uh, and so long as you can join two grids together, uh, you have a network. Now, if you do want data from one of the data sources that we have essentially built a, a, a spigot for, a, a data provider, then things couldn't be easier. Uh, exchange email, Facebook fan pages and groups, your own personal ego network, not others, just yours, uh, Flickr, media wikis, Twitter, 
the World Wide Web through Boson from the Uberlink Corporation down in uh, uh, Australia. Uberlink provides a web crawler and YouTube, but also a bunch of other data sources. Uh, UCINet, one of the other leading no network analysis tools. GraphML, because Gephi reads and writes it, so we read and write it too. Uh, PIAC, one of the other m much more advanced, mathematically sophisticated network analysis tools. So, you know, we try to talk to those tools and offer something that's different. Uh, many of them are much more powerful and sophisticated. What we offer is ease of use. We offer uh, a very familiar and comfortable environment that does most of the things that you're going to do in network theory um, as automatically as possible. And so we make it so that rather than taking the three classes in network theory that you take in graduate school, uh, you just hit the select all button. And, um, you know, uh, let Node Excel calculate them. We'll sort, sort them out later. And we've worked very hard at visualization, uh, which is to say the automation of network visualization that yields results that cross a minimum threshold. And, and we call that minimum threshold good enough. Uh, and by good enough, good enough is defined as a graph that you're willing to show somebody without putting any extra time into to refine it. And we believe that we have crossed that threshold, that we can create a graph and, you know, if you were going to publish it, you might refine it. But if you just need to use it as a work product, uh, it's good enough. And we do that largely, and, and some of you may recognize this, that these uh, boxes that are overlaid over the graph. Uh, that is a tree map, and we have uh, the father of tree maps, uh, Ben Schneiderman, invented the idea of a tree map and information visualization that could be called uh, a nested squarified pie chart. Um, we've built a uh, network visualization feature called Group in a Box that first chops up the graph, builds out a tree map, puts each cluster in a region and then lays it out separate from the other regions. So you, you'll see a, a link to the paper for that later in the deck. Uh, and then finally data publication. You've seen Graph Gallery now a few times. Uh, Graph Gallery enables the sharing of data and, and the creation of a community of graph analysts that I believe helps improve the quality of everybody's graphs because when people see a graph that looks better than theirs, they go, ooh, I'm going to go grab the recipe for that, and I'm going to take pieces of it and apply it to my own data. And over time, best practices rise to the surface. So what do you get when you do networks? I mean, if you've gone to all this effort, what do you get? Uh, well, with social networks, and, and there are many other kinds of networks. There are non-social networks. There are protein networks and electrical networks and computer networks. and investment networks, although those tend to get social, there are people involved. Uh, so what's the difference between a network and a social network? And, and the answer is humans are in the social networks. Not exclusively. Uh, there can be non-human entities in social networks. So for example, in a wiki network, there are editors, but editors edit articles. They don't actually edit editors. So editors only interact with each other by editing articles. So Editors and articles are both entities, uh, and so networks that are social are not exclusively social, but you put one human in it, it's a social network. So what, what do you get? Uh, you're going to know who are the key people, are there groups, and who are the bridges, if any, in the network. So you've seen some of this already, but you're going to be looking for shapes that look like this. You're going to look for the hubs. This is one of only a few, uh, of a number of different shapes, but it's clearly an important shape. You, you want to see the people who are sitting at the center of a lot of relationships. That, that can be important. Uh, but, you know, the person with 200 connections is not always the most important person. And this is where network theory really displays its strengths. It, it answers the question, in what way could someone with just two connections, have connections that are more valuable than somebody with 200? And how could that be? And the answer is, uh, depends on your connections. Right? If you are the only connection <laughs> to another group, having just two connections is plenty. 
Uh, if you're the only person in accounting who knows somebody in finance, if you're the only person in marketing who knows somebody in engineering, if you're the only person in one office that knows somebody in the other office, you're the bridge. And you don't have to have a lot of connections for your connections to matter. And so network theory considers both quality and quantity. So uh, hubs and bridges are important, and it's always interesting to look at the people with lots of connection, but it's important to recognize that not having connection can also be an important kind of position to have in a network. And we see a lot of islands, or you can call them isolates, uh, who appear in social media graphs. And it, it turns out that isolates or islands are an indication of the brand quality, how public a topic is. And you'll see that in just a, a little bit. Uh, and so clusters, that's the next level. We're moving up from individuals and their positions to groups and their shapes. So we also want to understand clusters. Essentially what we want to do is take a crowd, which when it has a physical form, has a lot of information in it. The shape, the size, the motion of a crowd, it tells us a lot. And, and humans are social animals. We're some of the best social animals on the planet. And we really understand how to read a crowd. But there's a problem. Uh, crowds are forming online as much, if not more, than they are forming in the physical world. I, I understand that there are just a few people in Tahrir, the real Tahrir, right now. But there are more people talking about Tahrir in Twitter, in Facebook, in various services than there are in that square. And so the cyber Tahrir matters, and the problem is that that's what it looks like. It, it looks like a stream. And what Mr. Obama is pointing to here is the need for increased federal funding for research into social media, I believe, uh, that would show us that, in fact, there's structure in that tweet stream. And that's what we want to reveal, that that linear tweet stream actually has a shape and that that shape reveals, for example, the divisions politically between people who are pro-Obama and anti-Obama. That we can actually see that a force in network theory called homophily, which is also known as the idea that birds of a feather flock together, uh, people tend to connect to the people who agree with them. And so we can really get some insight into the shape of social media when we analyze these structures. So uh, we can do this at the individual level. We're able to find the expert, find the discussion person by saying that people have these patterns that form around them as they interact with others and the people they interact with interact with each other. Um, these patterns let us really identify key people in the graph and know who is occupying positions that might be strategically important. Not just the expert, but also the bridge or the isolate. So uh, network analysis is a really powerful technique and computing resources have really caught up. It used to be very computationally intensive. It, it's still computationally intensive, it's just that we have an insane abundance of computation. And so it's getting easier and easier. And it's possible now with a end user friendly tool to get a graph, analyze a graph, visualize a graph, find an insight into that graph. And if you don't code, that that's okay. Uh, and we're finding insights. We're actually seeing things that tell us something about the world and you know we're able to co uh, contrast uh, Tea Party versus Occupy Wall Street. This was an article in New Scientist back a few years now. Uh, but it told us something about the different shapes of these movements in social media. And we, I think, now all recognize how important social media really is. So by applying this tool, we've discovered six different kinds of Twitter networks. We've made a lot of Twitter networks and certain networks start to resemble others. They start showing up again and again and again, and you start to think, oh, well, I've seen that one before. 
and and we have and we've now categorized them we've seen six basic different kinds there's the polarized topic the one where two groups are talking about the same topic but they don't talk to each other there's the in group one where pretty much everybody's connected to everybody and there really aren't any isolates in other words uh, it's the usual suspects everybody knows everyone the third one is brand. Brand, in this case, this is Lumia, the uh, Microsoft Nokia cell phone. Brands are mentioned by people who don't know each other and don't reply or mention each other. And so you get these big blocks of isolates. All of these people are individuals. They tweeted the word Lumia, but they did not reply, retweet, mention anyone else. Over here, this is what we're calling the bizarre. It's sort of like the brand grows up bigger clusters, more connections. These tend to be uh, global topics of interest. Uh, Snowden, uh, he's getting a lot of attention all around the world. Uh, in this case, this is the map of the word Flotus, F-L-O-T-U-S, as in First Lady of the United States, the, the hashtag used for Michelle Obama. Uh, this is the fifth of the sixth. This is broadcast. That is a New York Times correspondent, and um, he has tweeted, I have written an article. All of these people have retweeted the fact that this person has tweeted an article. And so this is the audience cluster. This is a broadcast pattern. These two clusters, however, are the communities. These are the people who talk to each other about Paul Krugman. And so broadcast can contain community, but it's defined by this structure, a hub and spoke pattern. Over here, this is actually, it looks the same. It's not. It's the inverse. This is the support pattern. The support pattern has arrows pointing outward rather than arrows pointing inward. Uh, this is, uh, in this example, um, Virgin America, the airline, and it's replying to people. It's providing customer support. It's saying things like, your flight has been canceled, this is what you do, or if you've lost your bag, this is what you do. Uh, and in these clusters, these are the community clusters, these are essentially uh, groups of industry analysts talking to each other about the brand or the stock or the product. Uh, these are the isolates. These are people who said, hey, I just got off my Virgin America flight, uh, but they aren't replying or mentioning anybody else. So th this gives us a way of looking at a variety of topics and asking questions like, which version are you? Uh, so we can zoom through these again at a slightly higher resolution. Here's My2K. It is a divisive, polarized topic. Two groups, highly connected to themselves, not connected to each other. Uh, C manager chat, community managers, the people who keep hashtags alive, keep message boards running. Uh, C manager chat is a very in-group topic, not a lot of people know about C Manager Chat who are not already connected to someone who says the word C Manager Chat. So very dense, lots of connections. Uh, and then we go to a brand, Lumia, uh, not many connections, very low density, a map of people mentioning a product who don't talk to each other about that product very much. Uh, this is Flotus, the bizarre, bigger groups, but still lots of separate groups. And then broadcast, uh, hub and spokes, but also audience clusters. And support, in this case it's Dell Listens, Dell Cares, and there's Dell Cares, and it's offering customer support here, a lot of arrows pointing outward rather than inward. And then the Dell Cares, Dell Listens discussions. These are groups of people talking to each other. So it can be useful to build these maps. It's useful to say, what does my hashtag look like? And how would I compare to some other hashtag that might be my aspirational hashtag? You know, well, we're this group, but we want to be like that group. Well, let's look at your hashtag too. Let's compare. And over time, if you make these maps, the question can become, how did that go for us? You've decided to intervene. You're having an event. You're having a tweet up. You're having a webinar. 
how did that go? And so I, I guess we could ask that question ourselves, shall we? Uh, let's go take a look at what happened to uh, the SQL Pass network. Uh, let's see if you folks uh, gave us some tweets out there. Um, so I'll just go and build another graph. And while I'm doing this, I, I'll pause again and see if there are any questions and if there are any uh, topics that you would like me to touch on that I have not touched on so far. Jen, any questions out there? Hello there. I've been, right. Hello so, there. Uh, I haven't seen any okay. questions. I haven't seen any questions in Twitter. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, so it's making the SQL Pass map. Maybe we'll see a couple of tweets out there. I, maybe uh, Jen will see your tweets out there. Mm -hmm. So um, that's our goal. We want to make uh, producing these maps um, a lot easier. We're trying to make um, many of the simple operations performed in getting data, analyzing it, and sharing it uh, that are currently fairly heavy. You pretty much need to be a software developer of one sort or another, I think, in order to be uh, able to manipulate graphs all that easily. Um, however, we believe that it's possible to do this much more easily. In the same way that desktop publishing made desktop pub publishing a lot easier, uh, well publishing, uh, I, I think any of us could now for almost no money whatsoever take a pile of text and turn it into something that resembles book brochure or flyer and it will be reasonably professional looking. Uh, we want to follow that same path. We want to say networks are really important network data structures matter. You live in a network society, you got to start looking at your network. Uh, so let's make that easy for you. And let's make it about as difficult as making a pie chart or a bar chart. Um, and maybe we can then get network literacy pushed further and deeper into the society. So we, we do things like automate the generation of visualizations that Typically, you'll, you'll get something that, like, that looks like this. This is the before. Uh, it, it, words like bug splatter and hair ball and spaghetti bowl come to mind. And as far as I can tell, only spaghetti bowl is a particularly appetizing description. Uh, and what we've tried to do is untangle that and say, well, automatically we can apply the group in a box layout and we can get much better results. Uh, we've been exploring a project with um, some recent uh, computer science PhDs at the University of Maryland, uh, and this is the work of Cody Dunn, now Dr. Dunn, at the University of Maryland. Um, where he, he's working on methods that take complex graphs and simplify them, and this feature appears in Node Excel. If you get the current version of Node Excel, you get this feature. It's in our group menu, it's group by motif, and it will collapse your graph uh, based on these kinds of patterns. Certain patterns can be reduced. Uh, these patterns, the fan of lots of singletons, can be reduced. And so these simplifications, uh, we will argue, are improvements in the automatic visualization of complex networks. So uh, there are lots of people out there who are now um, using the tool. Uh, Katie Pierce is a professor of communications at the University of Washington. Uh, she is studying revolutionary uh, hashtag use in Azerbaijan, uh, the protest Baku hashtag. Azerbaijan is, uh, anybody here on the call from Azerbaijan? No? No. It'd be late at night there. Uh, it's also a military dictatorship, from what I can understand. Uh, so it, it's uh, interesting for scholars to be able to look at the patterns of connection as people talk about these topics. Uh, other scholars, like Scott Dempwolf, who is a uh, 
PhD researcher at the University of Maryland who's been using Node Excel looking at patent data and looking at when the network that is formed when two names appear on the same patent. And what he finds are clusters of patents that indicate hot spots of innovation near cities or in regions where particular industries become well entrenched. The real satisfaction though goes to uh, working with humanities professors who are very much not coders who in this case uh, Professor Diane Klein at the University of Cincinnati who has spent many years studying the life and the relationships of Alexander the Great. And Alexander the Great uh, had a lot of connections and uh, uh, not all of them ended well but she had a big spreadsheet filled with these relationships but had never seen the pattern and in just a few clicks we were able to give her insight into her data uh, something that we're really interested in uh, liberating network data uh, that's currently locked up in data places that require code and we want to remove that. So uh, how would you use one of these tools uh, especially if you had a social media strategy in mind uh, you might make the maps of topics that either were directly or loosely related to your interest. And when you make the map, you essentially are identifying the influencers. Uh, you then follow those influencers, and you're going to find that a lot of them follow you back. Uh, so using the network map to identify influencers is a uh, productive social media strategy. So uh, with that, I think uh, let me. Uh, I think we've gone through most of this. Oh yeah, here, here's the. Uh, you can help. Uh, we're looking for people who want to extend it. Um, we'd like to build bridges to other data sources. There are refinements to well, pretty much every aspect of the program. There's a feature pending, so we're we're happy to meet technical people. We're, we're happy to meet people who want to use the tool and apply it. Uh, we're, well, we're, we've got lots of ways that people can help. So uh, with that, I think we're right about on time. Um, let me know if there are any questions, but uh, that, that's pretty much the material I have brought for this evening. Um, I'd be delighted to hear from you as you begin to explore the tool, and certainly in those first couple of uh, uh, problematic uh, user experiences, I, I'm happy to get you over those first bumps in the road as you encounter them. So uh, feel free to reach out. So with that, I, I'd love to hear any comments if there are any. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, that was a really interesting session. For those of you uh, listening, I've just sent a tweet, which is a reference to the Analyzing Social Media Networks with Node Excel book, if people want to go and follow that up. And we can see Mark's uh, details are on the screen as well. For me personally, it's been really interesting to have Mark along, uh, having a background in sociology. It's been interesting to hear someone who does it properly, so thank you very much. Um, so I think... Um, the social organization of online communities is something that's really interesting and will become more prevalent, I think, as we start to tackle things like crime that spreads around using social media, which we had in the UK last year. And we had some riots in London and throughout the UK. And people were using Twitter in order to organize flash mob riots in the UK. So I think this is something that will become more prevalent. So thank you for showing us Node Excel. That was really interesting and I've no doubt that there'll be lots more downloads. People are going to go off and have a look at it. Oh, well, wonderful. Well, thanks folks uh, all for your time uh, and I look forward to hearing from you on the web. Uh, I, I will leave you with the note that uh, every Thursday at 10 a.m. to noon Pacific time, GMT minus 8, I think we're minus 7 right now, but um, uh, we hold something called Node Excel Office Hours, so you're welcome to just drop in for any technical support. So that's every Thursday, 10 to noon Pacific time. Uh, and usually I tweet about it, and then there's a Google Hangout link that I'll put out. So uh, look for that or look on my blog. So hope to hear from you.
That sounds great. Thank you very much. Um, one last thing before we go, I'd like to say a big thank you to our Promatic Works who have sponsored today's session and Julie and I will have an offline prize draw because we have some books to give away. So we'd like to thank Promatic Works for giving us a book for this session and we'll post details of that online on Twitter as well. So a big thank you for Mark uh, to Mark for his time. I'm sorry we had some technical issues at the beginning and thank you for resolving those. And uh, and uh, the best of luck with the Social Media Research Foundation. Um, I'll go off and have a look at your sites now, which I can see is www.smrfoundation.org, which is a non-profit devoted to open data, open tools and scholarship related to social media research. So thank you again, Mark, and I hope wherever everyone is in the world, I hope you all have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank Good you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Bye-bye. <laughs>